HBO has just released a spin-off of the 2022 Batman movie, which featured Robert Pattinson as the caped crusader called the Penguin. Colin Farrell returns to reprise his role from the aforementioned movie as the titular character Penguin. It reminded us how different he looks as this character with all those prosthetics on his face and body. The transformation is perhaps equal to Tom Cruise's depiction of Les Grossman in the movie Tropic Thunder. The story picks up a week after the events of the movie, which sees the Riddler, who is the primary antagonist of the film, execute his grand plan to detonate bombs to breach the seawalls surrounding Gotham City, flooding it. The first episode sets the tone for what is scheduled to be an eight-episode long series that primarily focuses on the origins and the rise of Oswald Chesterfield Cobblepult, aka the Penguin into the crime lord that we are so familiar with in the comic books. The series also has a boatload of Easter eggs and minor characters from the Batman comics that look set to play important roles in this series. Just like the movie, which is based on the series, it looks to continue to take on the gritty and grounded approach to the story it seeks to tell. In this video, we will break down the show's first episode along with explaining the ending. We will discuss the brief origin of the Penguin as a character and provide a brief recap of the movie to provide context for some first-time viewers so that you can go into the series fully prepared. There are plenty of things to unpack here, along with Easter eggs galore, that we need to talk about. So without wasting any more time, let's dive right into the gritty, flooded streets of Gotham City. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Things will get worse before they get better. Batman 2022. Brief recap. The Batman 2022 sees Robert Pattinson as the Dark Knight doing Batman things, skulking in the night and putting thugs into coma. He has been marauding as the caped crusader for two years by the time the events in the movie take place. The story starts with a series of murders by one of the regulars in Batman's criminal gallery called the Riddler, or Edward Nigma. The psychotic criminal is inspired by Batman and tries to go about in his own twisted ways to get rid of Gotham's criminal underbelly led by the kingpin Carmine Falcone. After several lives are lost due to the Riddler trying to get Batman's attention while executing his master plan, they finally discover that the villain's plan is to expose the informant who was helping the Gotham Police Department from within the crime syndicate. This informant had helped the GCPD take out the former crime boss, Salvatore Moroni. This is where Batman's attention finally turns towards Oswald Cobblepot or Cobbs as he is known in the series, which we know as the Penguin. With the help of Jim Gordon Bat, Man tracks the Penguin to a drug deal, and a chase ensues. However, after they capture the Penguin, they find out that he isn't the informant they are looking for. It is revealed that the informant had been Carmine Falcon himself, who, in a bid to overthrow the previous crime boss, had aided the police department, and when the latter had been deposed, he had taken over his criminal kingdom with the aid of corrupt officials and police. The story then doesn't really feature the Penguin as the Riddler is caught, and his grand plan to flood Gotham City comes to fruition. We are left with Batman stepping out of the shadows and into the light, saving the people affected by the flood, and Penguin looking out of his office window at the devastation before him. Penguin Character Origins Movie and Comic Books the Penguin is a prominent member of Batman's rogue gallery and made his appearance for the first time in Detective Comic Issue No. 58, 1941. He was created by legendary comic artists Bob Kane and Bill Finger. His origin story varies ever so slightly depending on which era of comic books we are talking about. In the Golden Age comics, he was a skilled thief who fancied himself a gentleman of crime. In the Silver Age origin story, he is a young boy who is heavily bullied for his short and fat stature, his way of walking, and his long, beak-like nose. He was always forced to carry an umbrella by his mother after his father had died due to pneumonia from getting wet in the rain after refusing to carry one himself. His parents owned a bird store, and he spent most of his time in their company. The young Oswald even took up ornithology in college due to this. He would, however, turn to a life of crime after his mother dies and the shop, along with his feathery companions, are all seized to pay off his family's debts. There are many depictions of the Penguins in both comic books and movies over the years, with some being more grounded while the others pushing the limits of credulity. They all have a few things in common that we can talk about here. The Penguin is always depicted as a short and overweight man. He is normally dressed in tuxedos and formal suits, and is often depicted with a top hat and a monocle. 
The villain is also never seen without his iconic umbrella which often functions as a cane, a machine gun, sword, and a parachute. The thing that perhaps contributes to his bird moniker is his beak-like nose. The Batman 2022 film and the Penguin TV series, however, have a much more grounded depiction of the character. While he is seen wearing a suit, Colin Farrell's Penguin is not seen with any over-the-top tuxedos or monocles. He is presented very much as a real mob boss in his appearance. He is still overweight but not so much in the comical sense and his face is more scarred, with his nose again not being as elongated as it has been in previous renditions. He is the lieutenant of Carmine Falcon and is not yet the top dog that he is in the comics. We hope that through the course of the series we will get to explore more of his background and see the return of some of his iconic character motifs. With this brief explanation out of the way, and I hope you have some context regarding the characters in the TV show's backgrounds, let's get underway to break down and explain Episode 1 of HBO's The Penguin. Episode 1 Breakdown and Ending Explain the series starts with several news agencies covering the events of the Batman 2022 finale as the city reels in its aftermath. While the Dark Knight seemed to have saved the day in the movies, what he did appears to have been only a stopgap. Chaos reigns in the underbelly of the city, and a tenuous calm sets in before the real storm sets in, and the power struggle for Gotham's begins to fill the hole left by the death of Falcone in the movie. Bella Real, the mayor-elect of Gotham who was attacked by Riddler's forces in the final act of the movie, is seen addressing the public in a press conference. She says that Gotham would essentially emerge from this crisis and Gotham will be worth believing in again. Despite what she has to say, in reality, things are looking very bleak and hopeless. The graphics on the news channels also read about Batman's heroics in saving the people of Gotham at the end of the movie. The show also sees how this has further aggravated tension in Gotham between the rich and the poor. The rich and the elite who live in their suburban home and high-rise penthouses seem to have been unaffected by the flood and continue to prosper, while the poor and the ordinary folks' lives have been completely uprooted as they live in the lower levels of the city. Due to the renewal funds having been stopped, the city has no funds to deal with the crisis at hand. With relief camps being overcrowded and law and order breaking down due to the inaccessibility of the police and growing frustrations among the citizens, Gotham tetters on the brink of self-destruction. There are mass lootings being reported by the news channels, and riots are beginning to take place. The use of drugs known as drops, as they are taken as eye drops, has also become rampant, with those addicted to the substance being called dropheads. While the Riddler wanted to destroy the elites through his actions, all he managed to do was aggravate the poor instead and increase the gap between the haves and the have-nots even more. With so much blood in the water, inevitably sharks begin to gather in Gotham looking to take over as the new boss of the criminal underbelly that would rule the city. We also get introduced to Mark Strong, who is supposed to be playing a younger Carmine Falcone in the series. The fact that such a stellar actor has been cast for the role of a deceased character means we will probably be getting a lot of exposition through flashback in the upcoming episodes. The news channels then report that Carmine's empire is set to be inherited by his son Alberto Falcone, who is shown to be a spoilt rich brat, considered unworthy to carry on Carmine's legacy. Having grown up having a sheltered life thanks to his father with nothing left to want, Alberto Alberto is basically the typical entitled rich brat and serves as a foil to Bruce Wayne, both of whom had an almost identical life growing up. Alberto is actually a canon character from the comic books, which makes his appearance in The Batman, the long Halloween issue number one comic from 1996. There, he is a brilliant young man who becomes embittered towards his father after he is not allowed to enter the family crime business. Carmine in the comics does so to protect Alberto, but it is perceived otherwise, later becoming a murderer under the alias The Holiday Killer. Penguin then rocks up to Alberto's place to chat with the young Don, who is, as usual, inebriated to a degree. The two begin discussing business, a new type of drug that was even better than drops. Penguins fawn over Alberto, frequently referring to him as the boss and encouraging him. Alberto then decides to talk about how his father viewed the Penguin as a subordinate. He tells him that Carmine knew he was skimming money from him, but despite that, he considered him a good soldier. This discussion leads to the Penguin telling Alberto a story about a gangster named Rex Calabrese, whose legacy and life he wishes to emulate when Alberto decides to arrogantly insult Cobbs about his dreams of having a legacy worth remembering by Gotham. 
This leads to Cobb shooting Alberto without any warning and killing him instantly. By doing so, the showrunners establish one of Penguin's major character traits, that being, he will not tolerate insult no matter who it is coming from. Perhaps due to a deep-seated inferiority complex that he has had to harbor ever since his childhood, Cobblepot will not tolerate being disrespected. He kills Alberto despite knowing the can of worms it will open up for him and will result in his ambitions to climb to the top of the underworld even more difficult. One must also note the fact that up until that point, Penguin has been gassing up Alberto, encouraging his vices so as to enter his good graces and manipulate the young Turk. It reflects his volatile nature, where he is shown to be able to swallow his pride and do what is needed for him to achieve his goal, but at the same time, he is shown as capable of violence at a moment's notice. We then meet a new character called Vic, who the villain intercepts trying to steal parts from his Maserati. He doesn't kill the youth who has a speech impediment that causes him to stammer, perhaps seeing a bit of himself in the young boy. His interactions with Vic give us a lighter side of Oz, and we are shown that despite being touted as an antagonist, he does have a softer side to him. When he shares with Vic the flavors of slush puppies that he likes, along with how they both refuse to sit on the handicapped seats, it clearly shows that there is a growing bond between them, and it presents Oz in a different light. The show, however, delicately reminds us that at the end of the day, Oz is still Oz as he enlists the youth to help him dispose of Alberto's body in exchange for his life. We get to see Oz's mother, who he seems to be taking care of all this time. She clearly suffers from dementia and is one of his biggest cheerleaders. After hearing about her son's deeds, she tells him that it is his time to shine. We do not get a clear idea of whether she says this in a moment of clarity or whether it's her dementia talking. The audience is then introduced to Sofia Falcone, who is Alberto's sister, who has just been released from Gotham's infamous Arkham Asylum for the criminally deranged. She suspects Oz to have been Alberto's murderer and has him captured and tortured. With death being a certainty, the Penguin shows us that he is no ordinary thug and outsmarts Sofia by turning her attention towards Salvatore Moroni, who was her father's chief rival before his imprisonment in Blackgate Prison. Oz has Victor crash a car into Sofia's property with Alberto's body in the trunk. The episode ends with Sophia discovering that her brother's body is missing his pink finger, which has Salvatore Moroni's ring on it. The ring had been stolen from Moroni by her father, who had inherited it from her brother. With the pinky and the ring missing, she is manipulated by the Penguin into thinking that Moroni ordered a hit on her brother from within the prison and that the missing finger and ring were a hidden message of retribution. Oz is shown to be a cerebral assassin who will have to rely fully on his smarts and cunning to outmaneuver his far more physically and monetarily blessed adversaries to rise to the top. The ring in question was, in fact, taken from Alberto by the Penguin and given back to Moroni as a token of his friendship and loyalty, saying what he had done was to pay back the Falcon Coney for ratting out both him and the Moronis. Moroni seems to accept this without realizing the game that is being played at his expense. At the end of the episode, he is exonerated for Alberto's murder, and he walks away with Victor leaving the audience speculating of what more this ingenious criminal mastermind has in store for us in the remaining episodes. Marvelous Verdict the Penguin is not just another superhero spin-off series that we have been getting flooded with, with no pun intended recently. Maybe due to its grounded nature, it feels like a much more compelling and complex gangster story, something that we have been missing ever since The Sopranos. Colin Farrell is at the peak of his powers as the hobbling gangster. The Penguin, unlike Alberto or Sofia, doesn't come from a family of criminals, nor does he come from a privileged background. He is very much an outsider like you and me, having grown up idolizing gangster stories, both real and real hoping to make it big. Ostracized and reviled by society, he finds the life of a gangster perfect as he can finally take back from society what he wants by operating outside of it. We hope that the character continues to develop even more layered nuances to it as the show goes on. The first episode of the show has certainly laid down some solid foundations for what is to follow. We cannot wait to sink our teeth into the upcoming episodes as we follow the meteoric rise of the Penguin as the criminal kingpin of Gotham. The show looks set to deal with profound themes of acceptance, loss, glory, and mental health and doesn't seem to have any political agendas attached to it. It seems to be a straightforward good old gangster story, and that is not always such a bad thing. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. We at Marvelous Comics are huge Batman fanatics, with Penguin being the favorite villain of many of our folks here. It is therefore extremely exciting to get a show that focuses on him solely, as we believe this character is due to its day in the sun. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please let us know if you want to see more of this type of content. For now, we have to say goodbye until we meet again next time. Stay safe and stay marvelous.